Now, what we're going to do is we're going to first start by talking about some very, very simple two-day patterns. And we're going to talk about the rationale or the psychological implications as to why they make sense. Now, we went through the white and the black candle. The doji is a very, very unique candle. And Brad, if you could take a moment and explain how a doji differentiates itself in terms of a consolidation in a market and what it represents. Unlike the black or the white candle, which is, is illustrating a dominance of either the bull or the bears uh, for this trading session to dominate this market session, a doji candle illustrates that neither the bulls nor the bears were able to drive the market price f far enough or, or a, ma a majority difference away from the opening price, meaning that the bulls were unable to control the market and neither were the bears. In this instance, the market would close very near or right at the opening price of the current trading session. This is illustrating a, a stagnation of trend, uh, an equal force between both the bulls and the bears, which is causing the market to consolidate or to congest within this area. A doji is very significant. A doji found after a defined uptrend or a defined downtrend is typically synonymous of market congestion and a possible top or bottom. Exactly. So the doji is, again, one of the most important candles to look for when you're trading with candlesticks. One thing that you'll see as we begin to illustrate it is that the doji typically can be found at probably 60 to 80 percent of the tops and bottoms because what happens is if a market is in a defined trend and the analogy I usually use is that of a train if we're sitting in a train moving 90 miles an hour down a track and we're coming close to that station where we're going to stop and then move backwards before the train can reverse and move the other way it has to do one thing it has to stop what a doji does is it illustrates that shift in direction. The Western term is, is a pivot point. The interesting thing is that it, the Japanese realized that that particular shape or that particular trading day or cycle was indicative of a market in which neither the bears or the bulls ultimately gained control. Because obviously with a black candle, that means that the, the bears had the dominating factor in the market on that day. And reciprocally on a white candle, because it closes higher, it tells you that the bulls were able to win that battle that day. And the doji is the single most important candlestick to look for. There is another type of candlestick which has the same significance. It's a group called the umbrella lines. Now, the umbrella lines are composed of four basic candle types. A hangman, a shooting star, a hammer, and an inverted hammer. Now, one thing you might realize with some of these names like dark cloud cover, or hangman, or shooting star, is that the Japanese language is composed of kanji or word pictures unlike our language. And even the titles of the patterns and the candles themselves give one a visual imprint, really, of what the shape is like. And we will go in into particular examples and show you how effective these can be. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to cover just a couple of very, very simple patterns right now to give you an idea of how these patterns can be identified, what to look for, and then as we get into the session, we are going to talk about particular markets and certain patterns that we have found through research have a higher frequency of occurrence, higher probability of success, and then we're going to take that and incorporate it all together into a trading style that we have found is very successful. In fact, when we first developed the program, after about eight months of work, we tested our results. And what we found was that candlesticks alone 
had an accuracy level of about 40 percent, enough to really hurt yourself. And in fact, I'll never forget the day when Brad looked at me and he says, Gary, he says, I've seen you trade for five years and you hit seven, eight, nine out of ten trades. I've programmed every pattern that you said that you use and yet our net result is only 40 percent. And he looked at me and he says, why is that? And I looked at Brad and I said, because I don't always take the call. And you saw a light bulb just pop right into his head. And he said, well, what do you mean you don't always take the call? I said, well, I look at other factors. It's not just the candlesticks alone, but there has to be other factors before I'll actually take the call. And Brad looked at me and he says, well, what you're telling me then is we need to take this library and give it some sort of intelligence. And we went back to the drawing board and we developed algorithms that attempt to mimic the human mind. In other words, when we analyze candlesticks, we analyze it through not only the patterns that are found, but we also make sure that there are Western technical correlations, what we call confluence factors, that have to be evident before we will take the call. And so what we have done is we have combined a massive library of patterns. We have about 1,100 patterns, along with a series of rule-based parameters that will judge whether or not one should actually take that call. What we're going to do now is just show you the patterns in their raw form. As we go into actual examples and bring the computer up, we'll show you where we would take them, where we wouldn't, and most importantly, why. We're going to start by looking at some patterns that are simple two-day patterns. These are all taken from a book that was written by Brad and myself, and they are simply illustrations. In other words, they're not really markets themselves. And as you can see, these are, we're, we're attempting to show as a market comes down, there are certain indicators and certain candle types that we're going to look for. Now, the first one we're going to talk about is a bullish harami. Now, a bullish harami to the Western technical trader is an inside trading day. In fact, one of the things that you're going to see throughout this presentation is that many of the patterns that the Japanese have, we have, we just call them by different names. For example, a head and shoulders formation is known as a three mountain top. Now, the bullish harami, and first of all, harami in Japanese means pregnant. And the idea behind it is, is that visually it it reminded them of a pregnant woman. But the key is, as the market comes down, the essential component for it to be a bullish harami is it has to have a black candle, and on the following day, you have to have a white candle that is, has a small body. Now, let me spend a few moments defining what I mean by body and wick. I explained that the differentiation between a bar chart and a candlestick chart is that we draw a rectangle around the open and close. That is known as the real body. The difference between the high and the low are called the wicks. Now actually candlesticks is an American term. The actual term to the Japanese is anashkahabi. It is translated as a footprint. In other words, what the Japanese believe is that price movement over time will leave marks in the sand that if we can follow those trails, we'll have a, the ability to know where that market's going. The Westerners picked up the word candlestick simply because they look like candles. But to a Japanese, it's a nashkahabi. Now, on the bullish harami, it's simply an inside day. And one would always take the call, not at that point, but the following cycle. The Japanese style of trading is a very conservative style of trading. And so that any time a pattern is found, there has to be other factors. 
One, you have to have confluence or agreement with Western technical indicators. Secondly, you need to have a confirming cycle. A confirming cycle on a bullish reversal is always going to be the following. It has to be a white candle, meaning the market has to close higher than it opened. Secondly, you have to have a higher low. Hopefully, you get a higher high, but that's not essential. You would not take a call unless you had those two factors. And those two confirming factors are essential in taking any candlestick call. The next pattern we're going to take a look at is a piercing line. Now, a piercing line is very similar, except that the market has been in a defined downtrend. And on the following cycle, it opens below the close of the prior day. Now, if we're sitting in a short position, the market's been moving lower and lower and lower, and it closes at a dollar. Next day, it, it opens at 90 cents. You're going, I'm glad to be short. Hey, this is great. But at some point during the day, the market momentum shifts, and buying begins to accumulate. And so what happens is the market begins to move into the territory of that prior candle, but more importantly, it pierces the midpoint. Once it pierces the midpoint, the pattern has been completed. However, until we get our confirming candle on that following cycle, we will not take the call. The one thing also that you're going to notice as we go through these patterns is that what the Japanese have done is they have taken each possible scenario, any probability of how a market can react, and have identified which ones are indicative of a potential reversal and which ones are simply showing us that this bearish trend will continue lower. So a piercing line is a very, very common pattern, but it is also a highly predictable pattern when utilized with some other strategies.